It's official the notch has been evicted, kicked out and gone hopefully forever because now the normal non-pro iPhones have the dynamic island, bright displays up to 2000 nits, a new 48 megapixel main camera and better late to the party, a USB-C port. This might deserve a round of applause for Apple users and their user base but for Samsung users it's good enough to laugh and say about time. And even then, considering the Galaxy S23 Plus has a triple camera system with a dedicated 3 zoom lens, a faster USB-C port and charging, a 50 megapixel main camera with 8K recording and a 120 hertz display, with the starting price of both phones at £899, you get double the storage and more RAM on the S23 Plus at 256 gig and 8GB RAM. It looks like Apple are trying to pull a fast one and Samsung are here to stump the brakes and say, hey, not so fast Apple, this is how you do a plus size phone. Things may look familiar from the outside when it comes to the iPhone 15 Plus and even the S23 Plus as both have cemented their design identity but it's all in the finer details when it comes to the materials being used, how the phones are shaped for a better in-hand feel. Let's start with the, I guess, kind of new boy on the block, the iPhone 15 Plus. And honestly, the base foundation of the design is very much the same as before. What's nice to see is the more curved contour rounded edges to the phone that should make it more comfortable when it comes to handling, especially considering the 6.7 inch form factor. There are five colors available on the iPhone 15 Plus with pink, yellow, green, blue, and black, with Apple using what they are calling a color-infused process with a clean matte finish. And I believe this is the first time Apple have actually done a matte finish for their non-pro iPhone alongside the usual brushed finish to the aluminum frame they do. And I'm all for it. And I think it's a big win for design and build quality for Apple. The Galaxy S23 Plus, on the other hand, is working with a slightly more compact 6.6 inch form factor with Victor's Glass 2 at the front and the back with a matte finish and comes in four colors, which are cream, phantom black, green, and lavender with two additional exclusive online colors, graphite and lime. Now, I personally have the phantom black S23 Plus, and although the overall design lacks the class that the S22 Plus had thanks to the removal of the Stanford camera housing, the design is clean and simple. Now, as biased as I am towards Samsung, I will say the overall design and look of the iPhone 15 Plus is actually impressing me a bit more, not because of the dynamic island, but more because of the brushed metal finish and the matte finish at the back and the more rounded contour design compared to the sharper edges of the S23 Plus the iPhone 15 Plus might for once actually be the better feeling phone. Praise be to Apple for finally getting rid of the notch on the iPhone 15 Plus and also tapping into some of the display benefits of the iPhone 14 Pro Max with the Dynamic Island, a flat 6.7 inch OLED display, the boosted brightness up to 2000 nits. We could say Apple finally done justice to the non-pro iPhone display experience but not so fast because it's still using a 60Hz display. And although the screen resolution is slightly higher on the iPhone 15 Plus compared to the Galaxy S23 Plus, the S23 Plus is actually using a 120Hz adaptive refresh panel using a dynamic OLED display, which still boosts up to 1,750 nits for peak brightness, which is still quite impressive. Whether screen refresh actually matters to you or not is one thing, but I think at the price of the iPhone 15 Plus, Apple should have at least added a 90 hertz ProMotion display as a 60 hertz display experience is a bit dated at this price even if Apple are very good at a 60 hertz experience. For the specs and performance, this is going to be quick and simple because the iPhone 15 Plus is being given the hand-me-down treatment with the same A16 Bionic chip from the iPhone 14 Pro. Yep, this seems to be the tactic going forward for Apple with the Pro models getting the absolutely latest performance and specs while Apple are so confident with their overall performance that the non-pro models use last year's pro model chipset. I personally think if an Android phone maker did this while still charging a high price, it would be criminal. But in the world of Apple, things are different and it seems like they can get away with it and are confident in this approach when it comes to specs for the pro and non-pro models of their new iPhones. For the S23 Plus, on the other hand, Samsung decided this time around to completely ditch their Exynos chipset in favor of an all Snapdragon experience with the custom 8 Gen 2 mobile platform built for Galaxy chipset, which to say it's been a difference maker is a legit understatement to how good 
the S23 Plus has been when it comes to overall performance and especially efficiency. Now with the 8th Gen 3 around the corner and most likely moving to a 3 nanometer process, this might catch Apple with its pants down when it comes to the rumored S24 Plus being released in January. For now, I think the iPhone 15 Plus might just be okay. And I only say might because with no mention of how much RAM it's working with, we can only assume it's still using the same 6 gigabytes of RAM. And considering the S23 Plus has double the base storage at 256 gigabytes and 8 gigabytes of RAM, the overall performance might just be on the side of the S23 Plus from Samsung. Here's where the camera experience on the iPhone 15 Plus versus the Galaxy S23 Plus becomes even more interesting because on a hardware level, we are working with a dual camera system on the iPhone 15 Plus compared to a triple camera system on the Galaxy S23 Plus with a dedicated 3x zoom lens, which is something that is lacking on the iPhone 15 Plus. The iPhone 15 Plus does have a new 48 megapixel main wide sensor and does allow a new 24 megapixel shooting mode with pixel binning alongside an improved portrait mode for pictures with automatic capture without switching to portrait mode and also the ability to change the blur position after the shot with focus and depth control. That's all well and good and impressive, but considering the S23 Plus has a 50 megapixel main sensor which shoots 8K 30fps video with no crop, with active OIS, a 50 megapixel photo mode, and an ultra wide, as well as a dedicated 3x zoom lens. What Apple are bringing here may seem good, but compared to the S23 Plus, it kind of feels like a lot has been left on the table when it comes to the camera. Only time will tell once we have the iPhone 15 Plus in-house for an ultimate camera comparison against the S23 Plus. So be sure to subscribe and turn on notifications so you don't miss it. This initial discussion comparison doesn't touch on absolutely everything we need to know, especially on the iPhone 15 plus with things still waiting to be discovered like the battery size charging speed ram size and more compared to what we already know on the s23 plus with a 4700 milliamp hour battery 45 watt wire charging with reverse wireless charging which is still a missing feature on the iphone only time will really tell once we have the iphone 15 plus in-house for testing and review did apple even try with the iphone 15 plus in samsung's books with the s23 plus it looks like so far they didn't try hard enough.